Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to our Hidden Gem segment. This is Tuesday where we, both sides of the conversation, come together and highlight people in our community, especially people of color, who's doing amazing things in our community. We highlight Black businesses. I'm one of your co-hosts and co-founders, Rico Hamilton. We also have my brother. John Henry, co-founder of Both Sides of the Conversation. And we got our beautiful sister. Asla Costi, Crockett. What's up, y'all? So we, hey, we got an amazing show tonight. We got some folks that's doing some amazing things out there in our community. We have, uh, we have some young people who's doing some amazing things. I know I keep saying amazing, but black people, we're amazing. We got to just tap into that amazing. So I'm gonna hand it over to Kashla and I'm gonna allow her to introduce the people that we have. And we just gonna jump right into the show. Before we jump into the show, Rico, I just want to say a couple of things. Okay. Um, our community has been plagued again with another census act of violence. We want to keep the prayers of the family for the ones that we've lost today. We have to continue, continue to push, to work with each other. And uh, we got to heal in our community. We got to work together with our differences and come together. This is our month. Every month is Black History Month, but this is our month. And we will continue to work together to unify the community. The violence is, uh, it has been uprising throughout our communities in San Francisco, Oakland, throughout the Bay Area. And we want to make sure that people understand we have to get this under control. We have to work with each other. We have to support each other. And we need community to stand with each other in these, in these difficult times and make sure that we're looking out for each other, we're talking, and we're going to continue to keep having these conversations. We're going to keep pushing forward, and we're going to make this happen. You know, when that negative energy comes around, we will stand strong with the will of the people in the community, and we're not going to let them divide us as we're trying to bring each other and community together. So with that being said, let's continue to love each other, let's continue to respect each other, and let's continue to build our community, man, and we can do this with everybody working together. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Kosh to introduce our first hidden gym for the night segment. Thank you, John. Thank you, Rico. And again, welcome, everybody. Um, tonight, we do have some very esteemed guests. Um, our first guest is Dr. Noah. She is the CEO and founder of Roots Community Health Center. Dr. Noah of Roots um, Community Health Center has de devoted her career to eliminating health disparities and improving the health of marginalized communities. Though Roots founder in East Oakland, um, she has pioneered the delivery of culturally responsive whole health and championed the integration of physical and behavioral health care workforce enterprises, health navigation, and mobile medical services to address the needs of over 10,000 members. She has overseen Roots grow from two-person volunteer effort to a multi-campus, multi-county nonprofit with over 175 staff. Shout out to Dr. Danny. Dr. Abelita serves on the board of governors for the Alameda Alliance for Health and is the immediate past chair of the Alameda Health Systems Board of Trustees. Prior to Roots, Dr. Noah, an Oakland native, served in senior executive roles for Tribuco Vasquez Health Center, the Native American Center in Oakland, and expanded publicly funded primary care services throughout the Bay Area. Dr. Noah earned her medical doctorate from Howard University of Medicine and served as a National Health Service Corps Fellow. We'd like to welcome Dr. Noah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Can you tell us about your work at Roots and a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Um, so yeah, I was born and raised in Oakland, um, went to Oakland Public Schools, went to Skyline High, went off to college, went off to Howard University School of Medicine and just wanted to come back and be in community, serve the community and be in really be in community medicine. Um, so that's what I did. Um, just like you said in my bio, I was with a few different health clinics um, in and around Oakland. And even though I know I was doing good work, I know I was seeing you know, a lot of sick people who needed my help. I just always kept feeling like the people I'm worried about are not coming in the door. And you know, I wanna do it like a different way because the disparities that are out there are, are, are persisting. And so um, at that time, which was like, back in like 2007, eight, um, it was really looking at not only what I was seeing, you know, coming into the clinic, but also just what I was seeing as far as data. 
and map. And I used to look after map. I feel like I look at maps all the time, but looking at map after map and you'll see the same areas, you know, of East Oakland and less so now, but back then also West Oakland um, with a lot of health, not just health disparities, but basically every disparity. If I was looking at a poverty map, it looked the same as a premature death, you know, from diabetes map. It looked the same as a school suspension, uh, probation, parole, all these different indicators. Um, that we know have everything to do with health. And so um, basically started it, co-founded Roots Community Health Center with Ophelia Long, um, who has joined the ancestors as of last year. Um, but she and I, um, she's a, she was a RN um, and a, a healthcare leader, um, an apologetic. She was a, a, CEO, a CEO of Highland back before it was like, before it was Alameda Health System and all that. And, um, she and I co-founded it and we used to go around. It's like this doctor nurse duo just going around in Oakland and going to different types of facilities. Um, a lot of um, what, what they would now call like re-entry programs, um, basically just trying to meet people where they were literally. Um, and also, you know, in terms of their state of readiness of doing anything differently with, you know, what they were doing with their life, trying to achieve health, just meeting people where they were really like more questions than answers, right? Like we got disparities, healthcare hasn't figured it out, like what is, what is needed, right? So that was really like our, those were questions and the answers we were seeking. And of course, you know, we discovered what everybody knows, which is that, you know, health disparities are rooted in a whole lot of things um, from um, systemic racism, uh, multi-generational um, racism, poverty, profiling, incarceration, trauma, um, all of those things, redlining um, as, you know, really forming the basis of a lot of the health disparities that we're still seeing today. And so the answer can't just be like, put more doctors in the neighborhood or put, you know, or, or write more prescriptions or whatever. That's not, that's not gonna do it. So we put ourselves right there at 99th and East 14th in East Oakland, um, you know, for a reason, because that was really where we were seeing like a 15 year life discrepancy, life expectancy discrepancy between folks that were living like up the hill, a couple miles up the hill. Um, and the reasons weren't, you know, like directly, you know, violence or homicide, which is what people want to think or whatever, but it was really the same things, same reason everybody else was dying just 15 years earlier, heart disease, cancer, you know, um, stroke, all those things that really are preventable if we're, if we intervene appropriately um, and with culturally appropriate services. But we know that um, healthcare systems have done, you know, so much to earn a mistrust of our community that a big part of our job was like just being of the community and being in the community and and really overcoming a lot of that mistrust and which is a barrier all by itself. Um, and so our mission is really different, probably the most like healthcare organizations that you would hear. Um, but our mission is to uplift those impacted by systemic inequity and poverty. And we do that by providing the medical care and the behavioral care. But I think what really sets us apart is all the other things we provide. And so we provide health navigation. Navigation is really, um, you know, is, is basically navigators are people who are from the community um, who are trained as community health outreach workers, health coaches, um, and they are the main people that really help our members to navigate all the complicated systems you got to navigate if you came out of incarceration or if you just you know, need to understand what's going on with your health or behavioral health, or you have legal barriers. Um, you can't get employed. You can't get certain type of licenses um, because of a you know felony or a misdemeanor or something like that. Um, we also have um, workforce enterprises, which are really a key part of what it is we do, and it's probably the worst for folks that should be on this because it, it, they are like basically businesses, but they're under you know our our nonprofit. But really, they're like training grounds, but they're also businesses in and of themselves that, that we, um, where we train folks in light manufacturing. So that's Clean360. We make natural bath and body products. That's clean360.org. Um, and obviously, with the pandemic, we had a shift, and now we make a whole bunch of hand sanitizer in addition to everything, you know, to the soap and everything like that. Um, we also have a sign shop called Hamilton Broadway Signs, and it's like a 100 year old sign shop in Oakland that. Um, we were able to purchase and now we have training programs in graphic design and sign installation, which are all really great um, pathways, you know, for careers for folks, but we're able to basically have um, training, you know, workforce training in those settings. And I could just say like, as a physician, sometimes that's the best referral I can make. Like forget the prescription pad, forget the specialty, like folks need opportunity, hope, 
and access, you know, to those things, access to opportunities. And so a lot of times, you know, when we were in those early days of going around with more questions than answers, you know, it was like I said, what we already know is like poverty and um, being shut out of access to opportunities through a variety of different ways um, where the system is working just as intended to do that. And so a lot of our work is to, to help kind of overcome that. And so we, we really work very hard to, um, I mean, we work at the ends of like the deep end, like they say in the system, like the deep end, right? Like in the encampments, we're out there with our street medicine team providing care. We have our full scope primary care at 99th and East 14th and our headquarters at 73rd and MacArthur. Um, we provide, you know, the whole spectrum of care from newborn to our elders. Um, we provide care out in the um, homeless encampments. We have satellite clinics and two youth shelters, one at um, Dreamcatcher, you shelter for 12 to 18 year olds, one um, at Covenant House for 18 to 24 year olds. And we have, you know, satellite clinics right there in the drop-in center where those young people can just come and access no barrier, no stigma, no, no nothing, just come in as you are. Um, and so we provide all of those services like medical and behavioral, as well as the navigation, like I mentioned, um, as, and those um, workforce um, enterprises. And really a lot of our emphasis is self-sufficiency, um, self-empowerment, um, and community empowerment. And so a piece of it that, you know, that is really key is like what we learn in the exam room and in those deep ends of the system, like they say, is what we use to inform what do we need to do further, you know, upstream? What is it that we need to do in terms of education, access to opportunities, pipeline programs for healthcare, for behavioral health, for all the different um, services that we need in healthcare? Um, and how can we help people to basically overcome those barriers? And then how can we walk the walk ourselves? So you know, that's why we have workforce enterprises because we can generate income for ourselves that goes right back into more training programs. And so we've really tried to build ourselves to a way where we are the community, we're of the community, we hire from the community. We're, we're now over 180 full-time employees and our um, staff look just like the community that we serve because we are. Um, and so that's how we've grown. We now are also in um, the city of San Jose who asked us to basically bring our model there because they've never had anything um, African Center for Primary Care, and they deal with some of the same disparities we deal with here. They're definitely not as bad as they are in Oakland, um, but um, so we do have operations in San Jose as well, but we're definitely um, headquartered in Oakland. We do a lot of advocacy around things that we see and the systems that we think um, need to change because we know that we're not gonna program our service, program and service our way out of disparities. We're not gonna do it one patient at a time in the exam room. That's part of it. Um, but systems need to change um, if conditions are going to change. And we see firsthand how systems are creating disparities and maintaining disparities. And so we have to be about dismantling those systems and calling those systems out. So that's a lot of the work um, that we do as well. Wow, pretty amazing. Thank Shout you. out to the Howard alums. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's uh, the VP that's in office. But it seems <laughs> like Howard is all over the map. Everywhere I go, it's another Howard alum doing some amazing things for the community. But with that being said, um, you know, shout out to the work that you guys doing. I know we have one of your staff on this weekend, and I could definitely see how um, having people from the community being able to uh, engage with people in the community um, will definitely help break that medical barrier, barrier that we have in our community. And we know as black and brown communities, it is hard for us to trust healthcare for professionals uh, because of the past histories and the past stigmas. But, but on the sector of this mental health, um, this is a big, big concern. And I know me and my co-founder, we talk about it um, all the time. Uh, it seems to be a, a large amount of uh, mental health, behavioral health people in the community. And um, I, I see you guys doing your work in Oakland, but it definitely here in San Francisco, it just seems like we're not getting the support in the community, what they need from our mental health services. And I'm trying to figure out what is it, and uh, we've been trying to work on it and and, and figure it out. But there's yeah, a <laughs> I just figured it out as she was speaking. I just figured it out after the doc was while the doc was speaking. I figured it all out. Right, all right tell me this. Okay, I, first I want to say thank you for all the amazing work that you do. Right, but John, this is what she said. I knew I was doing amazing work, but. I wanted to figure out how can I get to those who wasn't coming in or wasn't coming back. That's now that's the part that touched me the most. And that's the deepest part that I heard because a lot of people don't do that. They worry about the numbers. They worry about what they already doing and what they already perceive to be success. And to her, she knew she was already successful, 
But in her head, she like, no, it's more success out there I got to tap into. You know what I mean? Because I know the disparities. I know what's going on in my community. And that what was real. That's what I heard. Thank you so much. John, we got to somehow collaborate with her and bring her to the city and figure out how can we bring some of this goodness over here. For real. <laughs> so I, I think that's what it is. Because me and Rico, we hear from community. And especially when these acts of violence happen, um, the biggest complaint from community is there's no grief counselors. No one's come to the community and talk to the community after these violent acts happen. No one's coming to, to reach out to the victims' families, right? But then it's this, this notion that we have these professionals in our community and it's come see us. And that just don't work for the black and brown community. It's hard to get black people to leave their community that they feel safe in to travel outside. And some of our facilities are in areas that they might feel is a conflict. How do we change that model? Do we need to have secure people to go with these professionals in the community? But I think Rico's right. You have to go to the people. And I think we've been pushing this, but it's a lot of money in mental health. Everywhere I go, it's a large amount of money going to mental health, but it seems to still be mental health issues in our community. And I think you hit the nail on the coffin. They got to get off their butts and get out in the community to make it happen. And I think that's where it starts. And uh, thanks, Rico, for pointing that out because I'm, I'm frustrated. We keep having these violent crimes in our community and I keep getting emails. I try to call 311. I try to connect with somebody. I'm going through it and they have no resources. And all these people do is show up and say, no, we do this. We are here. We are here. But the community don't. Well, I have a lot I could say about that. And we could probably do a whole entire um, series on this topic. But I'll just say this at least in Oakland, and I, and I haven't looked in San Francisco's numbers in a while, but it's no better um, in terms of some of the sp disparities. Um, I will say that the majority of African Americans are receiving mental health services in lock setting in Santa Rita jail is the largest mental health provider in Alameda County. Um, over half of the people, 12% of the population is African American, 6% African American male, about over 50% of criminal justice mental health um, or other, in other words, mental health in the jail is African-American men. So you, the disparities are very plain to see. The 5150 rate among the African-American males is also incredibly high. And Alameda County has the highest 5150 rate in the state. So these are all, uh, you know, the mental health uh, system in this country um, is a travesty. And we went from sort of like colonial era warehousing of people with mental health challenges um, to so-called deinstitutionalizing, letting everybody on the street and then incarcerating them all and reinstitutionalizing them in the correctional setting. So that's what we're dealing with. So you're dealing with a whole huge, um, you know, uh, machinery, right? That is doing what it, what it was intended to do. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that we have to create community solutions. Like we can't wait around for the system. And you're absolutely right. There's plenty of money in there. And I'll be the first one to say, we need to go advocate that our fair share needs to come into our community. At the same time, we can't expect the constructs that they have built to work for our community. So we got to build them ourselves. And we, we have to, we, those, those are things we have to, we have to build our capacity to do that because we, you know, and right now with the conversation about you know, defund the police or this or that, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the, the, the weeds of that conversation, but the conversation is that that's not need, who needs to be responding to our mental health crisis, I can tell you that much, but we have to have our own alternative that is able to identify um, mental health needs, that's able to de-escalate a situation when it's getting there, um, and that is able to intervene, and we need anchors in our communities that are responsible stewards of those public dollars, if that's what they're receiving, um, or that are building, um, you know, African-centered ways of addressing mental health challenges because, because of what happens a lot of times, I know I mentioned quickly about being, being treated in, you know, jails or in, or in, you know, locked facilities and things like that. What we see when people come out, first of all, they're overdiagnosed. I mean, I can't tell you how many times a week I hear someone say, I got bipolar and schizophrenia and no, 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 let's get... <laughs> Let's get down to what's going on and, and reassess, you know, reassess. And then the number of medications, the over medication that we're seeing in our community is, is also um, a, an issue. But I will say that it's the way that structures, you got to follow the money. It's like everything else. How do you get paid? The prescription, the diagnosis. So we, we have to realize that the way that the system is set up is really not serving us. So we actually have to build our own ways of doing that. It's not to say that's bad, 
And it's not to say we don't hold them accountable. We got to do all the above. We got to walk and chew gum at the same time. We don't have the luxury of doing just one thing. We never have. So let's not, let's not think that there's just one thing we can do. We have to address this from the young people to get into the profession, to be able to serve people in the community, um, to building structures that can adequately compensate professionals for doing this work and prevent burnout within our community, but also just building com community capacity. What is the capacity in the community to deal with these issues so that we're not relying on having to call 911 because we don't know who else to call, but we got to call somebody. So those are all real things and we need to have the solutions that we need to put those forward. Thank you. Um, Dr. Noah, is there anything that you want the people to know and how can they get in contact with you and Roots for further information or if they want to follow up about some of the social enterprises you named, some of the clinics, some of the satellite offices and programs, where should they go for that information? So rootsclinic.org is our website. I just wanna thank you all for what you're doing. I was so excited when I found out about you. This is exactly what is needed. We have to be having these community conversations. So I definitely wanna partner with you all and figure out how we do that. Um, every Tuesday morning, we do the People's Health Briefing. That was done specifically in response to COVID-19 because our community needed to really just sift through the noise and really get something um, clear and concise about what's going on in our community with COVID-19. So I'd love to figure out how to just partner with you on all ways of basically engaging with the community, answering the questions about anything, you know, whether it's COVID, whether it's um, violence, with any of those issues that are coming up in our community. So I, would, I, I just really appreciate you all for what it is that you're doing. I can put um, our email and such in the in the chat and the different websites um, if that would be helpful. Um, and really is rootsclinic.org. You can contact us through there. Admin at rootsclinic.org is the email address. You can just email for basically anything. And we're also just very accessible. We're right there at 9925 East 14th and at 73rd MacArthur. We're open, you know, regular business hours. People can just come in. We have behavioral health clin clinicians on site. We have our clinics open um, and we have our navigators. We do COVID testing, a lot of COVID testing. Um, so there's a lot that, um, that we can do and it's pretty easy to access us, but I'll put the, um, the handles and everything else like that into um, the chat if that works. Yes, that does. Thank you. Thank very you much. so much. And uh, definitely we'll be reaching out to you. We'll have Kosh definitely make that connection. We definitely need to have some conversation. And this is what, you know, when we started this both sides conversation, this is what we was intentionally trying to do because we heard from community. There's a lack of resources. There's a lack of transparent communication. And we're trying to be that hub to bridge the gap because we know that there's issues and we know there's stigmas. But if we have the people who look like us, who could talk about it, who can see them doing the work and believe in it, just like the sisters this weekend about the vaccination, I think more people will be willing to walk in faith and trust the process. So definitely thank you for acknowledging that. We're gonna keep pushing this thing too. But like all things, it takes community, it takes support to make this things happen. We're listening to your community. We're bringing the people here so you guys can get the resources and support you need. And we're gonna intentionally continue to educate and uh, evolve our community through this ed uh, communication. And um, we're just gonna keep doing it. Definitely we wanna reach out and see if we can get you to do uh, some kind of educational Thursdays because I think our educational Thursdays are starting to be something that people are looking forward to. And when we have these conversations about health and mental health, putting these slides and putting these segments together to help uh, community understand is what they need. And uh, we're gonna keep pushing this thing along. So thank you very much. Continue to do the work you do in any way we can support you. We're definitely gonna do that. If there's flyers or any information that you need to also help get out into the community, please let us know. We'll put them on all our social media handle. We're, we're gathering a good following and uh, people are looking for our site for information. Uh, I really appreciate what you're doing. So thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Our next hidden gem, um, Cuzzo, I hope you don't mind. I'm gonna go ahead and go to Miss Layla Bean. Um, Layla Bean Muhammad, founder of LB Designs, a clothing company that offers a wide array of custom garments and accessories. She is currently a middle school student at OSA, Oakland School of the Arts. Layla started sewing at seven years old and has attended sewing camps across the Bay Area over the last few years which fueled her desire and design for her own clothing and accessories. She's bad y'all too, she's bad. Her talent with challenging textiles, specialty projects and her own personal drive moved Layla to audition and get accepted to OSA with an emphasis in fashion design. 
She takes the fashion world by storm and has worked with Black Lives Equestrian Brianna Nobles to style Brianna for um, and fellow equestrians for a Black Panther themed parade photo shoot. Layla was featured by SF Chronicle in a video highlighting the event. In addition to creating and sewing her own designs, Layla likes to sketch, illustrate, cook, hike, run track, and photography. Fashion is not just Layla's hobby. She views it as a pathway to get to college and to have a career in the fashion world. Introducing my very own Miss Bean. Hi, honey, how are you? I'm good. Tell everybody, take the world by storm. What are you doing? How are you doing it? Tell us about you. Um, well, I'm a middle schooler at Oakland School of the Arts. I'm in sixth grade. I'm 11 years old. Um, I make clothing. I just made a denim patchwork denim jean set for my client. Um, I'm currently making a jean jacket with suede for my brother for his birthday. I've made a whole bunch of things in the past to get into OSA. Um, yeah, I like to, that's what I do. That's what you do. All weekend, I be checking on you, say, what Layla doing? She up there sewing? What's, what's your most favorite garment that you've created so far? My vest I have behind me. Well, you got to let the people see it, girl. This is, uh, go ahead, show it to her. Well, this is her illustration that she showed with her book. You tell them about it, baby. It's yours. I took um, a photo shoot. And my cousin modeled it for me. We got her makeup done at the Mac counter. You designed it. I designed it at the Mac counter. Um, I did this photography at the Oakland Zoo. Um, the vest is actually right here. If you guys, it's a fur vest, faux fur with the double-sided zipper. Um, that's my favorite piece. Thank you, Layla. You so, you so fresh. I wanna say you so dope, cause you know that's what, but I have to be careful about that, cause you know. But you fresh, girl, you fresh, you fresh. So I want to jump in there and say something because I think uh, this is very important. See here at both sides of the conversation, we are definitely about our young people. And to see somebody 11 years old doing the things that you're doing, like Rico said earlier, is just amazing, right? So Rico has a young daughter who sells makeup. And what I want people to understand out there is when we have young people who are doing the things that you're doing, who are inspiring, being an entrepreneur, living out your dreams and doing the things that you believe in and, and, and you're putting the time into it, your craft, we got to support you, right? And I want community to know our young people are doing amazing things out there. See, this black excellent thing is, is, is bigger than what we take in. And it starts with our young people. So I want to highlight you and say congratulations on what, you, what you're doing, because I think it's important. And I think our young people in the community, especially our young ladies, need to see other young girls doing this thing to inspire them to tap into their greatness and make their uh, dreams and visions come true. And it starts with people just like you. So I just want to say, young sister, keep doing what you're doing. I want to support you. Maybe you can make us a both sides of the conversation gear and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take some hoodies and some coats or whatever. Custom you want. made. I need fur. <laughs> I need the fur on mine. <laughs> now, we're now we going to deal with the PETA people when they come for us about the furs, right? We no, we she said faux fur. fur. She said faux fur. Let, let's see, they don't even know. They're trying to get you in trouble, girl. They're trying to get her. you in trouble. I heard her. What's really special about this duo to me is that her Baba Ron is sitting right there, right? And so what I wanted to do was highlight them as a pair because it goes to show that we can rear our children in a fashion in which is suitable, still dynamic, still full of black excellence, still very humble, still very just glorious, right? And so I wanna shout out her parents 
um, Mama Nicole and Brother Ron Muhammad, who are doing a very excellent job with their children. Um, but it goes to show that our hidden gems not only talk the talk, but they walk the walk. It's very important for me to see this in a family, in a family unit, um, because a lot of people will have you think that this is a myth. Black love is still there, Black excellence is still there, Black family still exists, and this is an example of one of those. So I want to take this opportunity to say thank you, Layla, for joining us. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep up the good work. Needles, threads, whatever you need. You know, we're going for granting. We're, get, we're trying to garner funding. So y'all, y'all donate to us. It's a trickle down effect. We make sure Layla got what she need, but her Bob is going to definitely do that. Um, Brother Ron, Ron yes, Muhammad is a is the founder of a nonprofit called Deeply Rooted, co-founder of Making Moves Motorcycle Club, board, co-founder of West Oakland's Networking One, a member of Council of Acorn Residents Incorporated, the director of Acorn Recreation Center, and the co-founder of Elite Services, um, brother of all trades. Deeply Rooted is a nonprofit that provides our Oakland community's most vulnerable population with free and nutritious meals program during this precarious time of COVID-19. I want y'all to know that these brothers are out there delivering meals every day, Monday through Friday, rain, sleet, or snow, you can count on Deeply Rooted to deliver meals to the door. Um, Ron is a California certified trained mediator and studied sociology. Uh, at Oregon State University, Santa Rosa Junior College, and Sonoma State College. He is an avid community activist serving on many boards, including the McClimates, McClimates excuse me, Alumni Association. Mac is in the house, y'all, which is one of his favorites. Ron also enjoys history, politics, and sports. Brother Ron Muhammad, my big cuzzo, how you do? Maintaining by the grace. What about yourself? Thank you for having me. Black and beautiful. Thank you for being here, brother. Tell us about yourself and what you got going on with Deeply Rooted, with Mac House, with One. Well, um, hell, I want to know who you was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it seems like it's all over the place, but it's really not. You know, coming from West Oakland, where we've had a history of lack of resources, it was a so-called negative that was turned into a positive because it forced all of the organizations to interact and network with each other. And so no matter what facet that you may be operating in, we all network. And so, you know, I don't know if people really understand the history of why that place is so majestic uh, to the town, to the Bay and to California is because when people of color first came here, during those 40s and 30s, 40s, and early 50s, they had to travel by the train. And so the train station was in West Oakland. So you either landed in San Francisco or West Oakland. And from there, you spread out everywhere. And so, you know, everything came up out of there and everybody networked. The place that everybody thinks that's so bad, it was rich, minerally rich in resources and the most important resource were, was the people. So with that being the foundational stone, we took that and that is the very premise in which we operate from in terms of being able to network with each other. Thus came out one, West Oakland networking. So we had to network with each other and utilize each other's services in order to just hold on until things would happen, but that gave us honest and sincere uh, relationships that other people try to buy or they try to force, but ours are really sincere. So no matter what field of endeavor you may be in, whether it's medical, you know, you in the faith base, you business, private, uh, personal, anything that you're doing, uh, we all know each other. I mean, senators and Senator Parada, when he was pro Tim, that's the head of the senators. He checks, he checked the governor in power, but we all know each other. Whether that's someone who may be doing street <laughs> stuff, we all know each other. The preachers, we all know each other. The business folk, we all know each other. And so 
we would do things, but we would network with each other. And so we, for 14 years, we've done um, feedings that, you know, we never got credit from, but, you know, somebody would bring the turkeys, 700 turkeys, some, the Deltas would bring the cornbread and this group would bring the yams and this group would bring the string greens. And it wasn't about to say I did it, but it was about all of us together. And from doing this type of work, over and over and over and over again and not getting any type of official help, but us having capacity, large groups of numbers of people, uh, we found it um, that it was only right to uh, set up some type of organization in which that could house that, in which we can operate from that premise. Um, if I, I would be remiss in my duty if I didn't mention uh, Pops, which was uh, former mayor, former congressman, Ron Dellums. He used to tell me, uh, he said, hey boy, uh, you can't be in this city and don't think that you ain't gonna be affected by this city. In so many ways, he said it really rough. I could tell you like that, but I ain't gonna tell you. He said so many ways that they can fool with you. So you gotta deal with the city because if you're in the city, they can affect you. They can affect your permitting. They can affect your, you know, your parking. They can just deal with you. So you gotta have these relationships. And so us down in the Acorn, people thought that was a HUD property, but it, it hadn't been a HUD property since like 89. The group of the Tenants Association took over the property and became 100% owners. I'm a young cat coming back home and joined the board with all these mothers. I mean, got on the, uh, the committee with all these mothers and then later got on the board and we became 100% owners. And then we partnered with Bridge Housing. And so we still have a piece of the ownership. So we, we move differently than other housing complex. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gave us the exposure to different uh, elected officials and things of that nature. and. I found out that if you know, if you really want them to be able to have an ear for you, you got to have capacity, either money or people. We don't have the big money, but we know how to get to the people. There's no problem whatsoever. And so we just started organizations that would be service-based. We're not interested in having a camera when we do things for people, only for notification. You know, it's like you giving me five dollars and taking a picture. You giving me the five dollars. We don't come from that. So it's direct services, and but we had to have an organization in which we can operate under. And I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Noah and her husband and the whole Roots organization. Even with one of our uh, social enterprises, uh, we we're doing deeply rooted cleanup. We just went and got our truck uh, fashioned out with uh, the print at their Hamilton uh, print shop. So that's just another form of us networking. We have to keep it right and tight with each other. Wow, wow, powerful information. And I'm glad you said what you said because that's the purpose of this Hidden Gym segment. And I know people that do this work when we service providers and we in the work touching community, uh, we do it because it's in our heart. You know, I know in Oakland they say it's in you, not on you, right? But the part of this hidden gym segment is to highlight the people that's doing the work, right? Pay the homage to them while they live it. The problem is too many times the people that's doing the work, we don't hear about it until they lay in the rest. We go to the funerals and the preachers to talk about all the wonderful things and amazing things that the individual did, but community didn't know nothing about it. So part of this segment is making sure that we highlight people from us. We don't need the, we don't need Fox 2 News. We don't need CNN. We need community to show love and support each other. And that's what we're trying to do here with this Hidden Gym segment is making sure that we give the homage and the flowers to those that's doing the work. And I was actually out there when you guys were doing the coat drive uh, and, and, and um, at the end of the year there. And I was impressed to see all of the people out there, all of the brothers from the club coming together. And I said, gosh, we got <laughs> we got to get these brothers on here because they the movement. They doing what they supposed to do. And uh, she said she will make it happen, man. So thank you for being there. Thank you for being a father that support his kids because a lot of time, black man in, the, in, in this time we live in, we don't get all the praise of, of being there supporting our little ones and uh, just proud to see you there 
And uh, I know you're proud down seeing your young uh, daughter doing the things that she's doing. And we definitely all support you. And thank you, brother, for being a stand-up guy in the community, making sure that those connections and resources stay there because our people need it. And that's what we're trying to do here is uh, build this community network of resources so that when people tap in, they know where to go and they know where the services are. Brother, well, if, if, if I could cut you off, I do want to say this to you. Uh, Sister Noah started it off in terms of thanking you guys. Right now, there are no local periodicals um, for us left, none. Uh, maybe the post, but mm, this is it. And so for you guys to be able to set something up, Cos, Rico, and yourself to come together, you guys are building a beautiful platform that people will have to come through. I don't know if you really, you probably think you know, but you don't really understand the platform yet. Cuz don't gas these brothers like hey, that. I, I mean, you, I gotta deal with them. with them when you get off of here. Hey, I, I, I want to say it. Because whoever's viewing this, they need to come through this because other, other platforms are controlled. And they, you know, if you don't say it quite right, or if you're in, you're not, in the uh, cultural appropriation stage. You know, we in a council culture, man, they will get rid of your ass quick. So I, I salute you all for doing what you're doing. I wanna encourage you all to keep pressing and keep making moves going forward. And I most definitely, my cousin had been told me about it. I'm gonna make sure that we make some kind of donation. Um, not that I have it, but I have to because we need these um, we need these platforms and I, I salute you all for what you're doing. And there's so many people out there. I mean, you got your Samantha Wises, you got your hubs, you, you know, you got Roots, you got Ocur, and we just, we gotta, you know, business, man. We gotta deal with each other. Everybody else is doing, that's the beautiful thing about this. This system with this hundred tenths, I can't wait. And you will have my donation uh, before tomorrow hits. Well, tonight, hell, I cash out you tonight. So I just salute you all. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Before, Thank before, you guys. before Rico jump in there and say this, I just want everybody to know this is why we intentionally created this platform. The commitment from all of the team here at both sides of the conversation. We made a hundred percent. We will not change our narrative. We are not the church. We don't care if you cuss. We gonna keep this thing authentic for our community. No, I mean, this is real. We're not changing. We don't care if they don't wanna support us. We are not changing the way we operate. And, and we made it known. If any time, whether it's corporate or anything politically, we're not changing. We'd rather not take the funding. We'd rather not take the support. We are going to highlight, uplift, and educate our community one way or the other through this platform. And we will not change. We will be 100% authentic, and it will be our community. We will not change. I promise you, we will not change. And that's just the way it is. So, Rico, with that being said, jump in there, my brother. Off top. You know, I've been waiting. I'm sitting here itching to say something. Brother Muhammad, Brother Muhammad, I just wanted to just commend you on the amazing work that you are doing. You are definitely a, a beacon of light. Everything that she mentioned, I'm sitting there like, damn, he, he, his resume kind of sound like mine. I do a bunch of little bit of everything also. So I just want to commend you for all the amazing work you're doing um, in the community um, and outside the community. We know that in our communities, there's not too many uh, role models as it, as it relates to black males. And, you know, you are one of them beacons of light. I, I don't know, you know, I'm not from your neighborhood, but just in hearing you speak and the way that you get down and listening to the bio like nine times out of ten it's a bunch of people who are watching you and who are looking up to the amazing stuff that you are doing especially the little mama that's right next to you i got 11 year old daughter she has her own business uh glitterkisses.com and she does um uh lip gloss and does and she create all these different things but i think that um the reason why your daughter is the way that she is because of you and her mom and the way that you guys are, are building her to be great. And I think that black excellence starts at home. Black excellence starts from a mental mind state that we give to them. Uh, I tell my daughter all the time that uh, overnight success takes 10 years. 
She don't believe me. She thinks that she a success already, which which is fine, which is fine. And I tell her, baby, you are a success. I'm rocking with you. But at the end of the day, that excellence is is, is, is what we instill in our children and what we're giving them. And I see that you're giving your daughter the amazing, the amazing gift of, of, of presence, right? Your presence is the most amazing gift that we can give our children. And then also you're giving her the intellectual properties that she can be able to articulate and be able to understand what she want to do. She's 11. I know some 30 year olds who still don't know what career they want to go in, right? So that's the most amazing thing to me is that we have an 11 year old who know what she want to do. And by the time it's time for her to graduate and go off to college, she didn't already made a decision and she didn't already been in the game and she didn't already got skin in it and then she'll be successful. So I commend you, my brother, Muhammad and sister, but continue to do the amazing work that you do here at both sides of the conversation. We're not just about highlighting. We also support. So we definitely want you to come up with a design for me and John and our sister Kosh. Maybe we can wear it out all together and take some flicks or something. I don't know, but do something for us. We'll figure it out. And we just want to support you in whatever way that we possibly can. Because it's about not just highlighting, but how, how do we support also. So I love you guys. Continue the amazing work that you're doing. And, and definitely, Layla, go back and look at our hit gyms. We support every business that come on here. I think I think it's not been one business we haven't not supported buying their products, supporting their movement. So we don't talk about it over here. We, we practice what we preach over here, and you will get our support. And I'll uh, have Kosh Connect you. Definitely make us something, and we will purchase it at full value because we believe that our Black businesses need to be funded. Like we go into Gucci, like we buy Birkin bags at the real cost. We're not going to come in there and ask for no discounted prices either. <laughs> but thank you very much. I'm proud of y'all. Keep doing the work you're doing. Kosh, let's go ahead and bring in our next hit, Jim. Thank you to the Muhammad family. Um, it's a pleasure hosting you and loving you and, and knowing that you're there. Um, and yes, we will definitely place our order and be in work within the community still. Um, so thank you guys for sharing this evening with me and, uh, and with both sides of the conversation. Much appreciated. Next, we have Miss Keisha Johnson, Tents for the City. Um, Keisha is an Oakland native transplant to the city of Stockton who has a soft spot in her heart for the less fortunate and tries to do some sort of community outreach every year. After the recent storms in Northern California, she was moved to do something for the homeless and thought about tents. How many of y'all have a tent? How many of you guys know the value of a tent? Um, although not doing her best, she could spare at least $100. So she made a Facebook post challenge to her friends to join her in what started out as 20 tents. The response was swift and she had nearly 50 in 24 hours. After requesting volunteers to help distribute, she discovered there were passing out tents in Stockton and not in Oakland. And a challenge was issued, you know, there too for her hometown. So 100 tents for Oakland, hashtag 100 tents from Oakland was born. Hearing from friends in other cities and now having added Sacramento to the list of cities also working on Richmond with so many challenges circulating in the internet, let's challenge ourselves to do something amazing. And as y'all know here, both sides of the conversation, we love amazing things. So Keisha, tell us about your amazing hashtag 100 tents for Oakland and all the other cities that you are gathering tents for and distributing too. Well, first, thank you guys for having me. Um, I'm a little nervous, but thank you guys for having me. Um, like you said in the bio, uh, it started off with just something out the kindness of my heart. I was trying to just get 20 tents and it just snowballed into something bigger and bigger and people are really wanting to come out and help the community. And I was trying to get volunteers and a friend of mine said, you from Oakland, nigga, what you doing getting tents for Stockton? And I said, well, I see these people every day. I don't have a point location in Oakland to, for distribution. Well, you need to do something for Oakland. You can't, you town business. How could you not represent the town? And like my shirt say, I'm just a little black girl from Oakland. So I could not leave Oakland out. So I said, well, we're gonna do 100 tents for Oakland, let's go. And I reached out and my friend Ms. Keenan at her restaurant, she said, well, you guys can have a tent delivered here and we'll go from there. And then I got another friend in Sacramento, Ms. Giles. She was like, 
will Sacramento want to make some noise too? Then I got friends in Richmond. They was like, well, don't leave us out. We got homeless here in Richmond too. So let's go. I put my cash app up for everybody to send cash app. Um, it's Capiche 64. Uh, if you uh, donate, just specify what city you want to donate to and I'll make sure you get tents to that city. Um, I'm coming to each giveaway. I'll be there passing out tents, rolling my sleeves up and we're going straight to the people. We're not waiting for the homeless to come to us. You drive by, you know where they at, East 14th, San Pablo Way, uh, Market Street. We, we haven't made it to San Francisco, but San Francisco, if you listen, and we challenge y'all to 100 tents too. Where you at? The 707. Where y'all at? We challenge y'all, 100 tents. These people are out here in the cold. We may not be doing our best, but everybody not doing their worst. So I know you can spare. We get $25 to get you a tent on Amazon. $35 gets you a good, decent four-man tent at Walmart. I mean, I just feel like we could do something for the people. We can't just not do something for the people. So um, in Oakland, if you want to donate, Tuesday through Sunday, 9 to 5, you can drop off your tents or your monetary donations to 44 Webster Street. Uh, Sac excuse me, Sacramento, 9147 Tuolumne Drive, uh, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. And in Richmond, she should be just leaving right about now. 1661 Folsom Avenue in San Pablo is Davis Park. Um, Stockton had already showed up and showed out. Stockton has played, I mean, we got well over 100 tents. I got tents behind me. I'm running out of space in my house for the tents in Stockton. Stockton is doing their giveaway this Saturday. Oakland is Monday uh, the 15th. Richmond will be Saturday the 20th. And Sacramento will be Sunday, February 21st. You guys got plenty of time to get some donations in. Right now, Sacramento, I mean, uh, Stockton is in first place. Oakland, we got pledges, but I don't have any concrete numbers from Oakland yet. And Sacramento and Richmond need a lot of help. If I can get some volunteers or some donations out in Sacramento and Richmond, that would be great. That's what we need the most help at right now. Um, I've got a friend that just hit me in Dallas. They about to start one in Dallas. So we might go nationwide, who knows? But I'm just collecting tents, sleeping bags, blankets. We want to help these people. I, I just can't not, not help the people. And every time it's something, a uh, natural disaster or something tragic like that, I'm just compelled to do something. A friend of mine we collected for the Paradise Fires. We drove up to Yuba City like three or four times, truckloads of stuff we just collected to get to the people because when you lose everything, like, where do you go? Who do you turn to? Like, what, what are you supposed to do? So I'm just trying to do the little bit that I can. We appreciate you, sis. And I just want to say salute to you. You getting some, so many just like shout outs and, and praises in the, in the chat. People love your honesty and appreciate you for all the work that you're doing across city to city. And I do want to take this opportunity because that's actually how I found you was the busy wife, who is our good friend and chef, Miss Michonne, um, down there at 44 Webster. Um, she is available and open for brunch outside now. Y'all go and get the sister's food. It's smacking. Thank but also, food. yes. For my friend. She is yes. an excellent chef and a beautiful, beautiful, sweet soul. You will yes. not be disappointed. You'll not right. only have a good meal, but you'll meet a new friend. Absolutely. So I just definitely want to um, shout out Michonne Keenan at The Busy Wife um, and appreciate her for supporting you and, and also supporting the movement. Um, I know that you are at Capiche and I want to make sure that we get that right because sometimes people, you know, once you cash app, it's out in the ether. So I definitely want to make sure that we get that right. That's dollar sign K-A-P-E-S-H-64 for donations. For so, make sure, <laughs> so make sure you get that to Capiche64, K-A-P-E-S-H-64 at Cash App. That's the 110 challenge. And please be sure to indicate your city so that we can make sure that that gets to the appropriate city. Um, I'm sure Oakland will definitely stand up now that we have you out there. And... Um, just know that the city supports you and that you have other places also that are willing to house your donations. We do a food giveaway um, for um, a cur, 
which is right there off of 73rd and Foothill down the street from Roots Clinic right there on 73rd and MacArthur on every Tuesday and Thursdays. So if you want to also combine that with the donations and the giveaways for the tents, um, I'm sure we can, can make something happen there as well. But, you know, I do believe in stacking resources. We want to make sure that you get all the resources you need. Folks, I heard tents. I heard sleeping bags. We're hearing blankets. I know folks can use socks, any kind of PPE that you have that you want to donate, um, any kind of hygiene kits. Let's make sure that we get all of those things out there and get them for the people. And we're taking it straight to the people. So my plan is Monday, we meet at 10 o'clock, 44 Webster Street with every supply, everything that we have and um, everybody grab some stuff and we're going out to the streets to distribute. We can go all over town, downtown, East Oakland, West Oakland, North Oakland, wherever you know that somebody is in need, come help and get some stuff and take it to them. They don't have transportation. They don't have bus tickets and bus passes and Uber and all of that. They don't have that um, ability to get to us, but we ride by them every day. We can get to them. So let's pack up our trunks and pull out our trucks and you know, whatever, let's go take it to the people. Cause I mean, why not? Man, so I just want to say this. I'm proud of you sis for what you're doing. I'm from San Francisco. So since you called out the city, I'm gonna step up and I'm gonna make my donation. But I'm gonna take it another far, uh, another step further because that's one of my commitments. You know, here at both sides of the conversation every month, we feed the homeless, we do other homeless feed, we partner with the City Eats, they on our website. If you go on our community partners, direct link with them. So I'm gonna reach out to the founder and we're gonna do, uh, <clears throat> we gonna do a tent giveaway, a, a blanket giveaway for one of our feeds that we do monthly in the city. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot you the money to support y'all movement, but we're gonna come together with you and we're gonna do a San Francisco one, but we're gonna grab the people from the city because one of the, me and Rico, we leaders of the San Francisco, you know, he doing the film on, I'm the Hunters Point, but we're gonna pull it all together and we're gonna do our city movement so the city get behind it. And I'm gonna start off with my first pledge to you, but then I'm gonna talk to uh, my brother Kaim over at the City Eats and we're gonna make this thing happen, but we're gonna get the Absolutely. whole city behind it, off top. Thank you so much, because that was my next place. I don't know too many people in San Francisco. I know a couple people from San Francisco, but I don't know a lot of community leaders in San Francisco, but I know what the tenderloins look like. I know what Mission Street look like, and I know that there's a need there too, you know? So let's take it to the people. So San Francisco, y'all with us? Because wherever there is a giveaway, I'm coming. I'm personally showing up to hand out tents in whatever city. I don't care where you at, I'm coming. So if San Francisco, we challenge you to 100 tips. Do we got Vallejo, Fairfield, back in the hill? Where the 707 at? Where y'all at? See, but this is how God works. And this is what we talked about, connected resources. You was looking for San Francisco. You got two of the best leaders right here, me and Rico. And uh, we're going to make that 110 happen. And uh, yeah, the movement I started, San Francisco. Okay, Feel let's up. go. Boy. Let's go. Let's get behind this sister and make it happen. We, I'm going to jump in here before we had this whole San Francisco love fest going on. Because like you, baby, I'm town biz. Tribe called <laughs> Oakland. You know what I mean? So with that being said, thank you, Keisha. I appreciate you being here. We appreciate the work that you're doing. We'll definitely make sure that you get that support over at Capi 64. We're going to make that happen. So, um... Thank you so much. And if y'all want to purchase shirts, we got shirts too. Just a little black girl from Oakland. Tap in. I can get you a shirt. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, sis. Thank Brother you, Jamel, sis. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate you being here. Um, it's, it's, it's another mouthful coming, y'all. So we got Brother Jamel. He grew up in the city of San Francisco. In the year 1997, he was in a horrific car accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. From that moment on, Jamel took complete control of his life and became the number one spokesperson for the Building Futures program. He then, became, he then began his work with the Youth Justice Institute, where he found his passion helping young men in the juvenile justice system. He moved on to work with the San Francisco Sheriff's Department Restorative Justice Program. There, Jamel shared his journey about trauma and insecurities 
and how he developed the tools he used to overcome his fears and beat all the odds that were against him. Running two successful businesses, K2L, Keys to Independent Living, and Grind Time, a clothing line. Jamel divides his time leading his team, running his businesses, and supporting various philanthropic community events. He is a mentor, a motivational speaker, businessman, and author, soon to publish his first book, Resilience. Jamel, how it go? How you do, brother? You're muted. How's that? Can you hear me? Perfect. What's up, family? All right. Um, uh, first, I'm just grateful to be amongst my brethren and sisters. And we're going to put some more emphasis on the city since y'all set tripping tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, I'm born and raised in San Francisco, you know. And uh, uh, like, like the brother, I'm deep-rooted in the city. Uh, to shell is a... a like a niece to me, she wanted to make sure I said I grew up not just in Bayview, but on Apollo, specifically for many, many years. And uh, I guess, you know, uh, the, like she said, the, 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 the car accident created the paralysis. The paralysis just sort of took on a life of its own, life of its own, which was, uh, I got out and what I saw was that the people in society didn't see what I saw in rehab, which was guys that could not do what I'm doing now. They couldn't do this, they couldn't do this, they couldn't move, they couldn't do anything from the neck down. So when I saw that, I have a cervical C7 spinal cord injury. Right, so I'm fully independent. I live alone and whatnot, the other. But I knew society didn't see what I saw. So to me, I got off good. I would say I got lucky. You know, this isn't the worst thing that can happen to me. It hasn't happened yet. So I think a lot of people thought he's tripping. He's in denial. But it was like, no, I'm not. It's just that I understood that what it could have been. But since society didn't see that, they still dealt with me, I saw, as a really bad situation. And since I knew I couldn't change it, no matter what I tried, no matter how vibrant I looked, no matter how strong I was, no matter how, it didn't matter. It was like being Black. It just didn't matter. They was going to put me in this box. So I was like, okay, they don't realize that this is not the worst case scenario. But since I can't convince them of that, let me demonstrate it. What can I do to level the playing field? Now, not to convince everybody, you know, that I'm that a person in a wheelchair is not all a bad situation. I knew I couldn't do that, but I was gonna do my part. So basically grind time came about because all I did was parlay what I did every day. And I just branded. I got up every day. Seven days a week, 20 years later, I still get up in the morning. Sometimes I wonder why. It's like Sunday, storming outside. I ain't going nowhere. It's habit. It's discipline. It's the grind. I got to get up. I'm conditioned. So I did it every day. You know, I did videos cooking in the house. You know, I've had two or three different vehicles. I drive. I traveled. Uh, and I videoed all of this stuff the last two years only because I was doing well, but I got to a point where I say, well, like Sister Noah said in her first uh, spiel, 
I'm doing well, but it's not, it don't count if I'm the only one winning. If I'm the only one seeing what I'm doing, then I can't go to a law and open a pearly gates and say, look what I did for me. And I, I, I did a great job, didn't I? You know, this is what I did. You see what I have. I, 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 me, me, me. And I knew that that wasn't what this was all for. This couldn't be just to serve me. So I just start videotaping. That's all I did. And then I branded it. And then I targeted everyone. And the point was, what they didn't know was, when you bought a grind time, it wasn't really me selling clothes. I was really, I was really bringing you into a world without you knowing it and making you be a part of it while making you feel comfortable about it. But this was really about my way of getting your attention to see what this life really is like to, so you can sort of steer away from the stigma and kind of start opening doors or allowing me in them. You don't have to open them, but when I show up, you don't, you, you're not distracted. You're not put off. You don't feel a certain way. And that was the hook. The clothes, the grind time, the hat, the gear, that was just the hook to open the door to a bigger platform. Because once I got your attention, and once you was working out and doing fit, physical fitness, and once you was going to events and doing philanthropy work, and I was sitting next to you, now I've gotten your attention to get to get to get you to hear what I really want. And that is to open up an entire facility, a, an entire community, unlike the one in rehab where I came from that was so clinical and medical and stifling and uninspiring with a lot of physicians and doctors giving you the worst case scenario. I wanted a facility where you walked in or rolled in or however you got down and it felt like the Taj Mahal. <laughs> That's what I wanted. And now that I've gotten your attention, because I've designed this stuff, and I branded it, and I've created a buzz, and I've gotten people wearing it, kids, babies, adults, young, old, my mama even wearing it. And she's 74, a minister, right? She, everybody can relate to grind time, no matter who it is. And all of us are grinding. So it's not a really about me or this, but if I can get you to get that mentality and then understand where it came from, now you will assist me in sponsorship, sponsorship and investment in uh, all of the resources and tools, the finances, the, 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 the all the above that goes along with building a foundation for its facility in a big city like San Francisco. So what I think do, that's a huge, that's a huge, uh, 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 that's a huge goal. Like, how are you going to do that? I mean, you know, come on, man, homelessness, we're tent city, we're all, it's COVID, you know, we got, uh, well, you know, we're, I'm black. This is, I'm not, that's nothing new to me, to us, to our people. We're, we're, we're built for this. Right? How many abandoned locations do you see in San Francisco? It only takes money. It's only money. Right? That's all it is. And I'm not scared of money. Right? I, I can get money. That's all it is. I mean, uh, a great credit score and losing all the bad habits over the last 20 years, I, I, that'll, get you, that'll get you something. That, that'll get you something, right? And you get enough people 
to believe in it. And again, you make it happen. And it's not about me. None of this is about me. Like uh, Deep Rooted, like Rico, Noah, uh, the sister that just went off out of Oakland doing a tent. None of this stuff where we have in common is that the desire and the drive is really not about us. It's, it's, it's all for the greater good. And what are we going to leave when we're here? I'm a single man with no children. I can't leave and just show all the accolades that I got. I have to leave something, right? We all have to. So that's what it's really all about. Uh, so in short, uh, I love what I do. Of course, social media you know, there's a little entertainment in there with that too. You know, I, I, I do a little flossing and I'll put a little extra on it here and there, you know, but that's, that's, you know, that, 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 that's all. But, but the bigger part is, it's really not even about, it's not about the glow. It's not about the glow. It's not about the glitz. It's not about the glare, although it looks like it. That's just to get your attention, right? I'm a, I, I'm a, I've been paralyzed for since 98, right? I haven't eaten fast food since 99. I haven't smoked a cigarette since 2000, you know? I probably have a drink two or three times a year. If that, I live a healthy life, but it has to be more than about me. So I'm hoping grind time, apparel, which, actually is a clothing line that creates positive affirmations. This one is We All We Got. That's for Black History Month. That's the goal. I have other patent labels that I patent with positive affirmations on it. Again, why? It's to get people's attention and anybody can wear it. It's just coming from me, that's all but it's to create the buzz to get the bigger platform. I wanna thank Rico for inviting me on, sharing my, uh, sharing this information and uh, I'm, I can be contacted. I think, you know, you got my info, it's in the chat. Hey, I love everybody's uh, drive, their desire, what they've been doing on here. Uh, I'm glad I went last, <laughs> right? because I was able to listen to everybody's story, right? Everybody's doing some good stuff. And I really do appreciate it. I'm not just saying that. I'm really like feeling that, you know, the, the, the whole, what everybody's doing, you know, and it's hard for, sometimes it's hard for us. We're so engrossed in what we do. We don't get a chance to connect with others like this that move the same way, you know, whether it's clothes, tents, mental ill health, whatever it is, you know. So have, being able to vibe, it's almost like being amongst my peers, you know. So I feel connected right now, and I appreciate all y'all. Peace and blessings. We appreciate you, brother. Um, there's a sister in the, in the comments. Queen Maisha said that your video, I Believe in Myself, changed her life. And so oh. I want to I wanna uplift that. And I also want you to speak a little bit about, I said at the beginning that you have a book coming out. How can people get to your book? Okay, so I'm still writing my book. And every time I think I'm finished, something else happens, right? So the chapters just keep going. But I have a website called Grind Time, www dot grindtime.com. Very simple. There are many excerpts of that book in that on that website. There's stories, videos about what I'm talking about, and graphic details uh, of the accident, uh, the coming out, the branding, the creating, the people that played a part. It's it's a it's a nice little movie. So if you visit it, you'll see the book. You can read a little bit about what's in it. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just put a period on it and get it done and just start writing another one because it seems like your book never stops. I feel that. I feel that. 
keep doing what you're doing. And if it's calling to you, then you know your process is your process. I want to thank everybody um, for joining us tonight. Um, definitely, like you said, the synergy of the platform. And I'm looking at the comments. Hopefully, you all have an opportunity to revisit it and watch it again and see all of the comments because folks are really moved. You know what I mean? And both sides of the conversation is definitely a movement. It's definitely a tool and a vehicle that we'll be using to um, advocate for community and definitely, you know, keep us grounded in community. And like John said, it's very important to us to maintain our level of authenticity here. It's very important to us to make sure that we stay connected. So um, Jamel, I appreciate you for highlighting the level of resources. I want everybody to know that on our website, um, www.bothsidesoftheconversation.org is very complete. There's a job board there. So if you're looking for a job, if you wanna post a job, if you're looking for community resources, if you're looking for a black business directory, if you are looking for mentorship for your children, if you wanna become a mentor, um, we're offering all of these things at the hub of both sides of the conversation.org so that we really can start to um, create and generate our own resources and, and have that regenerative system within community. I myself am working, um, with a couple of other folks throughout San Francisco to bring the pop-up resource village. You can see us there at popupvillage.org um, on Instagram and on Facebook as well. We've done that in West Oakland. We've done it in East Oakland. We've done it at uh, Buchanan Park. And we're now going to be over in Bayview for 2021. And we're focusing on uh, maternal health. And the reason why we're fo focusing on maternal health is because we understand the, the, the presence of black families, the state of black families and the importance of our health and families. And so we wanna make sure that we uplift that um, from birth, right? From birth and that starts with the, the parents. And so that uh, village is gonna be there located in, in Bayview this year. Um, and it is open to everybody. I know that another question that we had in the chat was if roots um, services are available just to, to the citizens of Oakland and no, Dr. Noah spoke to that and it's available to anybody who can get there and access those services. Um, health is wealth, y'all. Let's, let's address it, let's take care of it, let's speak to it. I know coming up on our next um, platform for Sunday Conversation, we have the Black Panther Party addressing men's health. And so um, it's a conversation that we started this past Sunday where we had Dr. Danielle Williams and uh, RN Teresa on, and they spoke to the COVID and the vaccines and different states amongst pediatric care and adult care and in the medical field. But we definitely highlighting different conversations, take a look at our calendar and see what's available on our calendar as far as the topics that are coming up. Um, you can definitely self um, register and schedule yourself according to what your calendar allows you to do. We have calendars there that show all of our topics. And if you wanna suggest a topic or nominate a hidden gem or register yourself to come on to be a part of the panelists and the conversation, you can definitely do all of that from our, our website, bothsidesoftheconversation.org. And we also are accepting all kinds of donations via Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, um, Zelle, you name it, you can find me in Oakland, you can find John and Rico throughout San Francisco and, and make those donations happen because it definitely um, is going to take some funds generated to uh, get that going. We're also in the midst of looking for a grant writer. So if you know of a grant writer, or if you have any uh, grants that are available for virtual media, for mentorship, for programming, please let us know. Um, you can e email any of us at the both sides of the conversation at Gmail and somebody will definitely um, get back to you. I just wanna thank all of our panelists tonight. I'm gonna throw it to John and Rico to see if they have any last words um, before we close out. I definitely have a burning desire. <laughs> I definitely just wanted to tell uh, sister, is it Keisha? Yeah, I definitely wanna tell you, look, I, I'm, I swear challenges, I am very competitive. So me and John, we finna figure out how, look, how the, how Frisco gonna stand up 
But we know this is a Bay Area thing, but we're gonna make sure Frisco stand up, even if we gotta create one of them uh one of them GoFundMe pages, whatever we gotta do, we're gonna make sure we get a thousand or a hundred tenths. We're gonna get it, we're gonna make it happen. Over I here. was aware of the comp the competitive spirit spirit in Northern California, born and bred here. That's why I kind of set it up oh, as yeah, a yeah, challenge. You know, look, you know that's how we is 415. We're gonna make it happen. Awesome. Yeah, y'all have something to prove. That's why the people in Stockton feel like they have something to prove. And they like, Oakland ain't running nothing but they mouth. Put your money where your <laughs> mouth is. And Mr. Muhammad, thank you so much. I received your donation. I'm going straight to Walmart tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And to my brother, Jamil, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I definitely wanted you to come on and, and tell your story and, and talk about the, the work that you have going on. Uh, you definitely have been a mentor to me, uh, regardless of, you know, the work that I was doing over there. You know, when I first met you and I was doing the raw talk um, out at the resource at the uh, reentry center uh, and you coming in and just watching you and you listening in. And, you know, I think sometimes we don't recognize those people who who really look up to us. You know, what I mean, like 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 we might the roles might seem kind of reversed in, in a way, but the person that might be leading the class might be the one who actually looking up to, to the person. Mm -hmm. So, cause I, I was looking up to you and everything that you ever said in the class, I was really holding on, holding on to, and I follow you, I watch you and I watch all the amazing stuff that you do. I watch your grind. I see the grind that you have going on. And I just want to commend you for not giving up and always having words of inspiration and always want to uplift individuals. I think you are a fellow Pisces like me. I, I, Okay, yeah, definitely. So I know you definitely got that good heart and good spirit. So continue with the amazing stuff that you have going on. Anything that both sides of the conversation can do to support you, whatever we can do, I definitely need one of them hoodies. I'm a, I'm a size medium. Uh, most people don't carry medium, but definitely, <laughs> definitely, I need one of them medium uh, of the Black History because I definitely want to represent um, and, and yeah. we'll support you here. Uh, we have a bunch of shows that's going to be coming on. I know you have a brilliant mind and whatever we can do to have you come on and, 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 and give some of that insight, we're here to support you. All right. Most definitely, brother. Appreciate you, Rico. Hey, man, I just want to jump in there and say this. I'm coming to get my green one, so I'm going to uh, connect with you. Let me throw my number in the chat. You know what I'm saying? Because all right. We all right, John. So, you know, that's all good. And Keisha, I'm trying to work out the uh, the, uh, the cash app right now so I can get that over to you. Um, but just want to say to you, my brother, Jamil, man, inspiration, bro. Um, you know, Thank you, brother. You know, if you had to look up a word, resilient, perseverance, man, you the brother that I want to see that picture right there, man, because you just gave me an extra uh, dry tonight, you know, because sometimes the enemy and bad energy come around and to hear, hear a brother talking about, man, I ain't quitting. You know what I'm saying? It's so easy in our community. We all know it's so easy to give up, you know? And then when situation that's tragically happened to us, it's so easy to quit, man. But you are an inspiration, not only for me, but a lot of people out there, man, it's no excuses. I mentor youth and I tell youth all the time, you got two eyes, two ends, two legs. It's no excuse, bro, you gotta go. For you to be at your, uh, where you at, to embrace it the way you embrace it and to keep pushing, bro, it's no excuse out there. So I'm just glad you came on and you gave that spill because our young people need to hear it. Some of the elders in our community need to hear it because we hear a lot of people say, yeah, this is burnout work. I'm tired. How can I get tired? And we got a brother here in his situation doing what he's doing, man. So thank you for giving them gems up, man, because I needed to hear that. You know what I'm saying? That just gave me that extra fire to just, hold on, man. If this brother is doing it, I know I can do it even more. And I'm going to push harder, my brother. And I, and I definitely got one of those extra large coming from you, man. So I appreciate right. you. Definitely. All right. Appreciate definitely, you. I want to stay connected with you because me and right. Rico will be having a conversation on our Sunday conversation in the future, uh, talking about uh, people in the community dealing with disabilities and making sure that they get the support they need. We definitely upgraded our website to make sure, thanks to the donations to all the people out there, one of the, one of the things we didn't have at first was making sure that our, our website was ADAD uh, compliant 
And through the donations of the community, we was able to get that feature up there for our people with disabilities and make oh. sure that we can listen and, and be a part yes, of the sir. conversation as well. But I know we will be having a conversation coming up in the future about it. We'd love to have you on and some of the other people to talk about the challenges and the things that you guys dip, uh, deal with so that community yeah. understands so we can get behind you, make sure that the legislative process happens on you guys' behalf to make sure you get what you need and community support you. So thank you, my brother. Uh, um, and just keep doing what you're doing. And I'll be getting at you for my uh, shirt. I'll pick it up to you when I get back. Uh, but with that being said, everybody, thank you for tuning in to this segment of our Hidden Gems. This Thursday, we have another Educational Thursday presentation coming on. We have an amazing sister that's going to come on and give gang, give the free sauce to the community that we need. Every Thursday is our Educational Thursday. We've had topics with lawyers. We've had topics with financial literacy. We're going to keep pumping out these conversations every Thursday to make sure that our community is getting the information to be powerful, to be impacted, to, to build this economic uh, wealth of information that we need because we understand that the difference between success is information and some of our community just don't have the tools and information to get where they need to go. So that's what our Educational Thursday is about. We'll have another one for you guys this Thursday and then this Sunday. Y'all heard Kosh talk about it. We're going to have a Black, Power, uh, Black Panther Party. Um, they're going to come on. They're going to be talking about Black male health, Black and brown health. We're going to learn some things that's affecting our community on the health center from colon cancer to pancreatic cancer to uh, sickle cell, the things that's really the silent killers of our community that's happening. And they're going to give you a list of things that we need to be telling our doctors to make sure we check so that we just not missing out on the things that's needed. So I think it's going to be a very, very powerful conversation. And then we'll follow up next Tuesday with another uh, amazing group of young people that's going to be coming on for our Hidden Gym segment. And next week we're having a special segment because we'll have a double Hidden Gym segment where we're going to have one of the elected officials come on to do an hour presentation to talk about some of the work that she has going on for community. And I think that's going to be power. And then we'll have our regular seven o'clock start for the people that's coming on. So again, thank you guys for tuning in. This is what this is about, the networking. I hope you guys were able to get all of these amazing people information. Please connect with them. Please support them because we know the only way we could build and do the things we need is through support. And that's the only way it happened. And that's what we're going to continue to do here at both sides of the conversation and support our people in the community. So thank you guys for joining. We will see you guys this Thursday and then we'll see you Sunday. Have a blessed one. Thank you guys for supporting. Thank you, Dr. Noah. Thank you, Brother Muhammad. Keep doing the work. Jamil, Keisha. Keisha, I got your cash app coming, love. It's coming. <laughs> see y'all next week. <laughs>